Uh, Dyson has answered the call from Boris Johnson. Yeah, good morning, Tim. That's right. Uh, they, they received a call from Boris Johnson uh, 10 days ago and Dyson, uh, in partnership with the technology group, they went about, They Dyson told all their employees, we're going to put aside every other project, we're going to concentrate on this, and they designed this ventilator uh, from scratch in just 10 days, and it's about to go into production. The UK government has ordered, I think, 10,000 units. Dyson themselves are going to offer, they're going to donate 5,000 units as well with 1,000 for UK patients as well. So this is a really good example of a company using its expertise. Dyson is obviously known for their vacuums and fans and air purifiers amongst other products. So they're using the, that technology, that proprietary technology to create a product like this that could literally save lives. Well, tell us about this Australian made product as well. Yeah, there's a product uh, created by an Australian company. It's called Sophie Hub. Now, this is a product that is ideal for elderly Australians, especially if they're in isolation during the coronavirus. So what it is, it's a product that sits in the in the centre of your home. There are six room sensors that go with it, and it can detect the movements of the people inside the home. Say, it's, let's call it a, an elderly couple, and it then will remember their, their, their daily movements. It will recognise if that... that that those daily movements change or are reduced. It's smart enough to even ask if a person is spending a bit more time in a room that they normally do, and that it asks them if they're okay, and they press a button on the unit to say they're okay. If there's no response, then a family member or a carer is alerted. So it, it, it helps. Uh, it doesn't use any audio or video, uh, any cameras at all, so their privacy is respected. It just totally uses movement sensors, but it can also remind them when it's time to take their medication. It'll remind them and when they've got to take their bins out, it'll even read out text messages. So it's a really good, great, especially for these times we're in right now where elderly people uh, are isolated. We, we, we don't want to endanger them. They're the most uh, uh, vulnerable to this disease. It's a, a perfect product in these times that can help us care for people remotely. Uh, Stephen, on a positive front, uh, and I've watched my daughter, I mentioned earlier in the program, uh, the school, uh, her whole school, her whole class is being done basically, and she's sitting in our lounge room. Roll call, the whole thing. Yep. How do you think it will change when we come through the other side? How much of what we're doing now? So you're coming through clear as a bell on Skype right at, at this minute. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to realise that we can do a lot of things remotely. I think a lot of employers will think that as well. A lot of their workers, all their workers are working from home. The ones that can, of course. Uh, and uh, we're seeing probably that in the future, I think when this is all over, employers may realise they might give their employees the option, look, if you want to work from home, that, that's available. Or he might roster some staff on one week and other staff on another week and rotate them in their office. Less office space, less traffic on the road less people on public transport, people are saving money at either end. So I, I think that a lot of people are going to see the possibilities with our connections and, and I think uh, continue to adopt them once this is finished. Yeah, we're probably going to go to Victoria in just a tick. I think Daniel Andrews is about to address the media. But Apple, uh, they may have to delay their highly anticipated 5G iPhone to next year. They, they've actually had a, they've been hit pretty hard, haven't they, the past few months? Yeah, well, they're a big company, so they've got they've got uh, quite a reach, and obviously a lot of the production is in China as well. There's reports swirling now that uh, even internally within Apple, reports are, uh, are saying that they are deciding whether they're going to go ahead with the launch later this year. The launch window is normally September, so uh, hopefully there's a few factors at play here. The, the obviously production factors, can they get it ready in time? Normally, parts and components are ramped up around June. I'm hearing that they. They're going to not be able to do that until August. So uh, even even when September rolls around, they are, they also don't know the global sentiment. They don't know whether is there's a market for to sell a brand new 5G device that's not going to be cheap to the worldwide markets that are economically uh, on their knees. So they just don't know where the customer is going to be at that point. So these are all the factors they're thinking about. The 5G phone for Apple needs to be a hit. They're a year behind Samsung, a year behind other companies in a 5G device. So uh, they, they, they want to give it its best possible chance in the marketplace. That might be till next year, uh, possibly a delay till early next year. They may stick to September. We don't know. I think the decision on that's going to be made in the next few weeks.